create a blank document, just like it would if I was in Word. So not too bad. Slow. All right. and if I go up here, there's one other thing. Oh yeah, we talked about OneDrive, right? So a couple weeks ago, I was working on a presentation uh, with Ben Curry, and we had to get something up because we were doing a presentation for up in Kentucky, and the file was was really large; it couldn't get emailed in. So I was able to take OneDrive. Right, this is OneDrive for Business. This is our Summit 7 OneDrive. All right, and I was able to upload all of these files here and share them out if I wanted to. So if I wanted to share this document out, all I had to do is click on these little dots right, and do share. Now, there's that preview loading up. Now, it's about an 80 meg file, so it's going to probably take load a little slow. Um, it's got a lot of graphics and those kinds of things in it. But you can see it's loading it up within the browser. And then I can also, if I want to share it out, I'll go through and I can ask, right? Or I can put people in there if I want to. So if I type in, let's say Scott, well, Scott Edwards, all right, he's a president, and I want to share that with him, it auto fills it. It said, all right, well, there's one Scott that matches up inside of your contacts. Is that who you want? I say yes. And I can say edit or review. And then we talked earlier, right, about getting a link. If I just want to create a link to it, I can say create link, and I can grab that um, for view only, and then I can also create a link here if I want to. Then let's say after we're done with that, then if I want to disable that link, because let's just say I just want to put it out there for a day. Right. Surprise, surprise, you click disable, yes, disable link, disable link, and there we go. If I want to see who all it's shared with, it'll show me who's who has it. So, are there any questions? Or if you want, I can. I mean, I told Lane I'd, I'd be here uh, after after this to go over any questions or, or or things like that. So that's that's really what I all I had. Was there anything else, Lane? You want me to touch on? All right, good deal. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. for being here. We kind of threw this together last minute. Some of it's relevant, some of it's not. It's kind of like drinking from a fire hose, they say. Um, I don't expect everyone here to know all this, because first thing you come in, you know, there's training, can I do this? Can I? All I really want to say is that first part I'd say at the beginning of the meeting is we're laying the foundation so that we can do these things. Whether or not we don't use anything more than Word or Excel that we've used before, we're better than what we're at, because we're at least going to be on the current version. We're going to be in um, being able to use new technology, those types of stuff. As we get more proficient with it, and as people become more comfortable, and as we start rolling more things out, we'll be able to start using more of these things. Uh, the SharePoint collaboration that uh, Jason mentioned, I can think of little quick things when I first came here. I know Charlinthia was sending out, um, here's what the auditorium is this week. Here's what it is, every, you know, it's an email, and everybody has to do this. Well, obviously we can create a SharePoint site for the front office or for where we want to and those types of things can be there. Charlinthia can update it, everyone can see what the availability is, people can go through and request access to the auditorium, um, all those types of things as opposed to doing it. I know another document I've seen flying around was like an employee list, employee contact list, phone numbers, that type of stuff. Obviously one of these SharePoints would be an obviously great place to do something like that where you can go and have them up there. You can secure it so only the right people can see it and edit and modify it and those types of things. But those can be the kind of things we can do. So we have a lot of those things we can go that they don't have to be really earth shattering, sharing it with people outside the world kind of things. It can just simply be something internal, some communication that we can do. We can use these tools to do it. 
So as we get these in place, there's a lot of things that through my mind as I was here for the three or four months I've been here, that I'll see things come and I'm like, oh, we could do that in SharePoint, but we don't have SharePoint. Or we could do that if I could share that out in OneDrive or I can do these others or these mobile applications with the thing. Um, I did take a couple of notes. I just want to hit on real quick. Um, one of the things is um, uh, we talked a little bit about what's available. What Jason pretty much talked about is what we refer to as the government level three. It's a G3 suite of tools. That's what AGI um, has purchased. And it does have everything you see here. So there's actually one more level that actually has phone systems in it and all this other stuff, but we don't have that. But we're at pretty much the highest level. So everything you saw there demonstrating, include the video stuff, is available uh, to us that we'll be able to use. Now, with that being said, ISD is implementing this statewide. And it is extremely difficult the way that this is connected between the local area network and on-premise and data centers we have here in Montgomery and Microsoft's data centers up into the World Wide Web. So there's lots of links and connectors and synchronization and security and all this that has to be done to allow all this magic to take place. And they're rolling it out slowly and methodically. And they're doing pilots and such, which Jason alluded to, with Exchange, which is the email portion. They haven't even gotten into the pilots on the Exchange or the link part yet, but those are coming soon. Uh, the OneDrive that we mentioned, that one terabyte drive, which is gargantuan, we never would have thought that we would get to that point, is coming. I know that the Office of Information Technology with uh, Mr. Brunson White and all those are taking that under their advisement now and they're trying to get their heads around the security and the policy of that. Because obviously, as you might imagine, if you stand up for the entire state, there is a lot of sensitive data and they're having to get comfortable with are we going to allow people to be able to put this out there? Are we going to allow people to do it on their own? That. So they're trying to create some policy around OneDrive. The technology exists, and it's coming soon, but we don't, AGI, have that today. What you do have today, and we'll start implementing it pretty soon, you'll start seeing a lot of my folks running around and talking with individually and getting it all installed on yours, is you will have the Office Pro Plus, which is the Office 2013, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all this other. Most of you already have that. It's a different licensing model, but really, it will be really no changes to you. If you're used to using Word 2013, it'll be the same. Excel 2013 will be the same. Uh, the beauty of it is, though, is with us having that install and getting you connected up into the Office 365, it's laying that foundation again so that as we do bring on Skype for Business, OneDrive, SharePoint Online, you're already be in place to be able to start taking advantage of that. So that's, that's the roadmap that we have, and obviously my number and all is up there, and we'll share this with you later, so if you have any questions, uh, let us know, but I just wanna let you know, it's like tomorrow, you're not gonna have all of these. All of these are purchased, and all these are coming, but we don't have them all yet, because we're waiting on ISC to work with the Summit 7s and the Microsofts of the world to get it all spun up for the state. Um, Web apps are kind of here, the SharePoint examples, I gave those two. I'm just kind of, these are the things I talked about. Oh, the one thing with Exchange, I see Patrick in here, some legal, and obviously the commissioner's still in here, which appreciate your time, commissioner. <laughs> I didn't know I was actually gonna have the commissioner here, and didn't know he'd be here the whole time. I appreciate that. The, um, we do have, with the Exchange, not only is that a much bigger mailbox, we also have archiving. So a good win for you guys is how many people in here, um, love those PST files that they're having to keep up with on their C drives and such. I mean, that's awful. This will allow us the ability to pull that in and it will go into an online archive. So if you're using it through the web or doing these others, you'll have access to all your archiving stuff. So you want the PSTs will go away. Um, another thing as far as the legal part goes, there are time to time that it's either an internal issue or it's something we get subpoenaed from the outside, but we're having to hold on to emails. You know, don't delete these people's emails or search all of your emails that have this social security number in it or this whatever in it. We now have the ability to easily do that and supply this stuff to the courts and all this other. I know it's a big win for you. Uh, other people may not be that excited about it, but it's still something that we could not do before that we'll now be able to provide. And so that's a big deal as well. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to mention about this is now if we had the big meteorite takes out downtown Montgomery, your email would be gone. They would have it backed up somewhere. Hopefully that place survived and they get it back eventually as soon as they could. 
as soon as we move this up here onto the cloud, Microsoft, uh, I believe in one of the presentations I heard a thing, a, a SOC P, S O C P, or something that stands for some other company's problem. And so what it amounts to is at that point, it's a Microsoft issue. So when that big meteorite takes out downtown, assuming we're lucky enough to survive that, our email will continue to work. We can get to anything, we can still flow, we can still do all this other, and the disaster response and probability, I know that's a big deal for, uh, I saw Dr. Frazier in here, uh, Dr. Fields in here, uh, Tony, some of the others that are all in here that are worried about, you know, keeping their business going after any type of disaster might occur. So um, all of those things, the SharePoints, the OneDrives, anything as we start doing those become Microsoft's. Uh, Microsoft Security to take it extremely <laughs> seriously. All the people that have any access to their government cloud, which is what this is, all go through security checks. Um, the data centers are extremely hardened to the point of even man, having man with guns at front doors kind of stuff to, to guarding your data. Uh, they take it extremely serious and they invest billions of dollars into their security. Um, so that's what, what we've done on our thing with that. Um, that being said, I, I know we're kind of running late. I, I don't know that people want to, we have a few more things, just a few seconds to talk about. Uh, Chris is going to talk about the door locks and, and such we're doing. Um, uh, ben wants to talk about some of the GIS thing we're doing, but all of those should just be a few minutes apiece. Um, if you'll bear with us and want to know those, we can bring those up or we can take a five minute break if you want to, whichever everybody would like to do. Keep going. All right, let's keep going then. We'll do it real quick then. So let's bring them up uh, kind of one at a time if we can. And let's talk, let's bring Chris up. And Chris is gonna talk about a few things that he's doing. And if you do have to leave, I totally understand. Um, we're just running a little late. So Chris, if you wanna come up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. In, indirectly it will to be able to take credit cards is a big deal because it, there are incredible amount of federal laws they love to put people in prison if you start messing with their credit cards and messing up so there's companies that handle the taking of these things um, I, I think the University of Alabama has worked with some of these things I think AUM's worked with a company called Alabama Interactive that's done it there's a lot of companies that are out there that that's what they do is they handle those types of things I've worked with uh, the Department of Revenue, for example, taking in their tax stuff, and I think they're on schedule this year to take in a billion, with a B, dollars online from taxpayers and, such, and from business and such. I think Walmart's probably 95% of that, but I mean, that's still, that's what they're getting. Um, so with these tools, it won't directly get you where we need to be. We are going to start going into that area, but it will give you the, the back-end tools to be able to collaborate and do those. So, the answer is not really, but it will help in a, in a little way. Gets us where we need to be. See the flashy light? We're attempting to record this, so don't yell at me. Don't ask me questions I can't answer, okay? <laughs> right. um, this is my slide for the doors. I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, but do pay attention to it. Uh, there will be a test, so we'll go from there. Um, We've been working really, really hard to get rid of our 2003 servers. 2003 servers are the equivalent of XP computers. Any of the weaknesses that existed on the XP also existed on the Windows 2003 servers. So we initiated actions, oh, I guess in, towards the end of last year to start removing ours. Um, we got our final <coughs> significant one done just about two weeks ago. We still have one more, which is a web server downtown. It is moving forward. Uh, we'll be throwing a switch on that in next um, week or so. Uh, you probably remember back in the early this year when we were coming around, we doing all the remappings of all of your drives and stuff. Well, that was part of that vacating the 2003 servers and moving forward. Um, we're sitting pretty good now. We are actually ahead of a lot of the state as far as our migration away from the 2003 boxes. Um, and as I said, we will be finished probably by the end of this month. Okay. 
The other thing I have up there is the, um, the, the PA system. Have you noticed the alerts on your phones? Okay, I apologize for them staying up there. All right, I haven't figured that part out. But um, recently there was an incident nearby that kind of highlighted our inability to notify everybody in a expedient manner. We had the emails, but the commissioner and, and Daniel uh, voiced a concern saying, hey, we, we need to be able to get this information out faster. Uh, we were tasked to come up with a system. We looked at several. We, um, the one we found has numerous functions on it that we will be setting up as we go along. One of the, two of the items that I was really interested in is the weather alerts. Those are pre-programmed. They come from the weather service. We identified the geographical area that we were interested in and they come in. Um, I will identify how to get them off of there after a reasonable amount of time and we'll take care of that. Another one is the Amber Alerts. The Amber Alerts will come in the same way as the phones. Um, it has a different geographical area because I figured we would be more concerned about something going on in Birmingham related to an Amber Alert than we are a weather alert. So that's moving forward. We have um, purchased two buttons that we'll be putting in the security booth. The, the buttons are you know, no-notice alerts. They will send out alerts to the, all the phones and to the um, desktop displays that we purchased. Uh, not everybody will get a desktop display. We're not exactly sure how we're gonna deploy that. What it is is it pops up on your screen instead of popping up on your phone. It's just a heck of a lot easier to see and know what's going on. Um, we'll keep moving on with that. Um, if you have any needs for PA, um, let us know. We'll try to implement them. As to this up here, see the green? Way down in there is the reds. There's the other red. All right. The reds are the existing doors that we have. You know how you hit the button to get out the door? Well, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to have